Hey guys, Matt Grenner here from the beyondgrappling.com and the universityofgeo.com and today I'm going to show you um, how to how, what you can do to convert your chest freezer into an oh your chest freezer into an ice plunge so you can do some ice baths at home. Uh, I've been ice bathing now for about uh, over a year. Uh, sorry, I did cold showers for a year and then um, I moved on to uh, a garbage bin with the ice in it and then I moved on to the chest freezer. Bought it, got it on marketplace for really cheap. Googled how to do it with a few articles and then I'll link them in the description box. That's my rooster, it is the morning, and, um, and, uh, and that sort of stuff. Does it work? I really do think the ice plunge does work. Um, you know, I'm a judo jiu-jitsu coach, I get kicked in the shins, twisted, um, pulled and yanked around each and every day, and it really does help uh, my recovery, I reckon. Um, and so, um, when you build your ice chest freezer, you need, you need three things you need to make it work really well. You need uh, movements, you need a pump to move the water around, you need filtration to filter the water, and you need sanitation. You need ozone, something called ozone, which helps uh, oxygenate the water and kill the germs in there. So there are three things you need for your ice plunge. Um, and um, so let's, I'll show you what you need to do to get your ice plunge uh, working, pretty much. Okay, so I've actually got a lock here to stop the kids from getting in and out of the ice uh, plunge. I lock it and hide the key. Um, so pretty much here we go. Here's the ice plunge that's working. The first thing you need to do is. Um, seal the seams okay so you can do something use something called JW Waterworld uh, in America or I use something in Australia from Bunnings called Aqua One uh, Epoxy which will it's a porcelain finish so it stops the water leaking out of the chest freezer that's the first one second thing is I've got a filter the filter needs to be um, whatever the um, it needs to be four times whatever the amount of the uh, or the ice chest freezer is so if you've got a 200 litre chest freezer you need one that does 800 litres an hour if you've got a 400 litre chest freezer you need one that does 1600 litres an hour okay that's that there's the ozone so that'll pump water uh, oxygenated stuff into the water uh, that's dangerous for animals and, and people to breathe so do it I usually do that from like 1am to 3am because I'm never awake then and then I've got the movement here which is the pump okay and the filter also does movement as well so that is my chest freezer then I just oh yeah and then over here I've got a setting called an ink bird which will um, pretty much you plug this into the wall and then you plug your chest freezer into this so I've got it set at the moment for 2.9 degrees so it'll get all the way down to 2.9 degrees turn off and it'll keep going up and up and up until it hits 4.9 degrees and then it'll turn back on and go back down to 2.9. Um, and so uh, that way it saves electricity because you're not moving the massive amount of water from very far. Um, so it's, it's just better for you and it just keeps it at around about a decent temperature. So that is kind of my ice bath. That's how it all works. And then I just upcycled some timber for the end of the street to make it look good. So yeah team, that's my uh, chest freezer ice plunge done. That's what it looks like. Um, I do ice plunge pretty much every day using the Plunge Tribe uh, website to kind of track my plunges and that sort of stuff. Common things you do with an ice plunge if you have a shower before you get in, um, there's less sweat in there so it stays cleaner for longer. That's the first one. Second one, studies show not to ice plunge directly after weight training, okay, because um, information goes in the muscles, information helps strength, uh, so you need, your muscles need to help recover that. If you ice plunge straight after strength training, apparently you lose those benefits. So you can after cardio, you can after judo, but not after weight training. You gotta wait at least four hours to do that. Um, uh, start off slowly, so start off at seven degrees, and I'm, I'm, I usually uh, do it between like four and six degrees. I only just dropped it down to two point nine just to see how I'd go, uh, and I did. I think I did um, five minutes of three point nine the other day. So um, I'm slowly getting. But it's not about um, it's not about how low you can get. It's about just how long you can stay in there for. But also not you don't want to be in there for twenty minutes. Like a human man reckons eleven minutes a day, uh, eleven minutes a week. I try to do five minutes a day with my fingers in. So at the very beginning, if you have your head out your feet out and your hands out, you can do it longer. Then you start with feet in, and uh, once you get good at that, then you start doing five minutes of fingers in. Once you can do that with your feet and hands in, then slowly reduce the temperature. And so I essentially want to get to, I don't know what temperature I want to get to, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is the closer you get to zero degrees, the more dangerous it becomes, okay? So you don't want to go to, to one degree for 30 seconds, that's pretty dangerous, okay? So you just keep it at five degrees for five minutes, or four degrees for five minutes with fingers in, feet in, and that's, that'll give you the benefits you need. So um, whatever it is, that's it from me. If you have any questions about anything, leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you about that. But have a great week. I'll talk soon.